Hey guys, welcome back to episode number two on the new survival series here. We are down in the tunnel. I wanted to give you a, a, a heads up after we finished carpet bombing with as much TNT as we had left. We've cleared out all the redstone and now we're down here at the very base and we've discovered we have a number of slime chunks which might come into play for us a little bit later for potential farms. Uh, we've gathered up uh, everything that was on the ground and I've got about a tenth of this to get them well to match up to the natural ground. In the process of looking into this, I've actually made a base change, uh, change to the design of the base. I am no longer going to clear everything down to bedrock outside of the inner circle. We're gonna leave it at its natural height and leave it as landscaping, as if somebody were had planted the base into the ground itself and didn't move anything other than clearing out the water. We're gonna go through underground. We're going to definitely have to spend a lot of time cave lighting, making sure that mobs aren't spawning because in here, one of these towers that'll be outside of the circle will actually have a mob farm. So I will be coming back and chiseling out the rest of this, going all the way around. Come here, you. Who said you could jump in the video? I, I, I don't remember giving permission. No, I, I did not say anything about video bombing. I know you guys like the photo bomb, but video bombing, out of the question. Don't do it again. You see what happens if you do. And come here, you. All right, you guys have fun. I can use some more of you anyways. Might go talk to your friend over there. Uh, today's episode, though, what? What? What do you have to say? Tell me. Now. I want to know. Oh, all right. So today's episode, though, we're going to come back to this, and we're going to eventually set up the garden farm but we need to get an ink farm going and i still need a ton of sand because we still have to make a lot of black concrete we won't be using nearly as much as i initially planned uh oh one of their friends is coming over uh, we're not going to use as much black concrete as i initially was looking to do but we're going to still be using a lot of black glass and enough black concrete to where the seven stacks of ink sacks i have from manually hunting them is not going to be enough. You want to come join your friends? Thought so. You stay over there. I guess maybe we'll stay right in the middle. Seems to be a safe place. So we've got some prep work done on the ink farm. We're going to head out to that. I'll be right back. All right, guys. So we are here in the ink farm area out in the desert. We've established a, by looking at the uh, view of the rivers, this was about the best section we had. All of these going out were pretty curved. Now, I'm going to hopefully remember to link a video in the description regarding a uh, mob, farm, excuse me, mob farm design that I saw on YouTube um, that we're going to use as the basis, and it's from Kill a Drone. Now, I love looking and working on new designs. I could very easily have just built a tank. The most basic of squid farms would simply be put in a eight by 12 or nine by 15 or whatever the biome allows in the river inside of a desert. And for my area, it ended up being 11 by about 17. I could have simply built a water tank, brought it down to 46, put down a bunch of fed skates and let the squids drop. I've done that before and I bet you, you probably have too. I like to test out new designs a lot. Now, the work one that we're going to build from Killer Drone is actually much more labor intensive. But I want to see it. the mechanics. I look over the mechanics and they seem pretty sound. It's going to involve setting up a bunch of two by two water chambers over fence gates to minimize the spawning of salmon and cod and any other fish that would spawn. Now, I know we. It, he believes we won't get salmon and cod. I can't swear about puffer fish or any tropical fish, any the other stuff. Uh, and I did not look up the spawn area for dolphins, but I believe dolphins are bigger than two. Uh, if so, I'm not expecting too many to spawn. And honestly, I can't swear. Uh, I didn't check the wiki to see if they spawn in river biomes or not. So I'm going to focus more on the mechanics of a squid farm. So let's talk real quick before we get to work on squid farm mechanics. At a minimum, you have to be in either a ocean or certain variants of the ocean biomes or rivers. The only places I believe now that squids will spawn. They also only spawn, oh, it's be turning night soon. 
I'm afraid of the dark. Um, they also only spawn between y equals 62 down to y equals 46, which means after we've cleared the water, we have to dig down. We also need to dig down lower than that for a collection system. So we're going to set up four layers high and four sections wide of these two by two areas just to test out this farm to see if this farm works. I don't know if I ever want to do this again because I had to craft roughly 950 fence gates that we're going to have to place and open and place a lot of water very creatively. Um, so it is much more work than simply building a tank, but that's all I want here are squids. I want to minimize the other water mob spawn rates so it focuses solely on squid. So while this is running, I can be mining sand to take back to my base that I'm going to need for one, for water clearing, creating sections in the ground, two, for making concrete, and three, I'm still going to need a lot of glass. And I've made about three, three and a half double chests worth of glass so far, and I think I'm just about there. But I definitely know I'm going to need a lot more sand. So what we need to do first in order to maximize spawn rates is we need to clear water 128 blocks in a, I'm just going to call it a radius, from the center of the squid farm. As I'm wandering out collecting sand and this is no longer the center, spawn rates could decrease if water becomes within 128 blocks of me. So we're actually going out approximately 140 to 150 blocks on a radius to minimize that chance. So going, uh, I don't want to talk to him. Going out that way, I've cleared back in a diameter about 155 blocks. Uh, it was 128 in, uh, come here, I got to show you. It was 120 in that direction, about another 30 going out that way. So that section's already been cleared out. I did the same thing going out this way. Uh, about 130 blocks out going straight to the north, and it's about 40 blocks going out towards the east. This one, we have to do roughly the same thing. Um, there's natural barriers going out that way and that way that once we've hit, that will be more than sufficient for me to wander about 30 blocks out from the squid farm. And then there's a couple of ponds going back this way that we need to clear out. Now that doesn't maintain that there couldn't be an underground pond where they could form between 62 and 46. I, I haven't looked for those. I'm At this point, I don't plan on it. As long as the spawn rates here are pretty good. Um, again, we're still subject to the mob cap of the server, the number of players on, where they happen to be. If anybody else is hanging over an ocean, this is gonna slow the farm down, but Right now, there's only a handful of people on, uh, so there's a good chance we can get some good spawn rates. Um, so we're going to work with this. We're going to get to clearing the remainder of this water. I'm going to uh, try to see how fast we can get this out and then go over here and we'll be back in a little while. All right, so we, I wanted to do a couple of different methods of clearing the water here in this little section just to show you uh, the different ways you can do this. One, especially when the rivers are deep, you really need to be pretty methodical in your water removal. Uh, a sponge can only clear you know, so much water. And if you start clearing from the bottom down when you've got a very deep river, you're, you're never going to clear it. You're going to fight a losing battle. So to start with, I'd actually, before the video started, I'd actually gone through and cleared out the first whole layer of water. Then went back through and did a second layer to bring it down. And then I went through and just kind of haphazardly did this to show you that unless you have, I got a couple that didn't even hit water there. Unless you have an insanely large amount of sponges, as I said, I got lucky coming out of my temple, I got... Uh, four sponge rooms out of it and got quite a few sponges um, unless you actually plan it out and you start going haphazard you saw what happened there 
realistically, I normally would have probably taken one more layer off before going through and try to do the final clearance as I did. But I wanted to show that. So I'm going to continue to remove these remaining sponges. I'll go back and clear those two rivers and then come back and we'll get to work on building a farm. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys, so now we've cleared out all the water in a roughly 160 block radius from here. Uh, walking forward, left, right, took about nine hours of actual clearing all the water over and over with sponges and drying them out and continuing to go down. We are going to mine down all the way to level 30. And, and here's how we're going to set this farm up. Squids have 10 health points, which means in order to kill them, they have to fall 14 blocks. We're going to have them fall into a half slab as well to really give them that extra 14 and a half. So the first layer of fence gates is going to be down here at Y equals 45. Squids start at 46. And to maximize the spacing of this farm, the fence gates have to go on 45. 46 and 47 will be water. 48 and 49 would be an air gap. 50 would be another layer of fence gates. 51 and 2 will be for water. 53 and 4 air. Fence gate in 55, 56 and 7 will be water, 58 and 59 would be an air gap, 60 would be a fence gate, 61 and 2 would be water. So it's going to give us a number of layers of spawn spaces for squids. And again, the goal here is to try to get just squids. I don't want all the other fish or anything else that could spawn in the water. I simply want just squids on this farm. By doing that and eliminating the potential for anything else to spawn, it should increase the spawn rates of squids. So we are going to chop down all of this down to Y equals 30. And actually, I think we're going to go down just a little bit lower because we also have to put up a collection system. If the squids fall from 45, they need 14 blocks to fall. They have 10 health points. So hitting level 30 would kill them. We're actually going to put a half slab right above that. So 31 would have a half slab. So 45 is air. That's 14 and a half when they hit. That should kill them. And then directly underneath the half slab on 30 would be the mine cart. And then we're going to have to build a side section just for collection. Given We'll see the initial spawn rates. I think one hopper minecart will probably be enough versus sending a bunch of them back and forth and back and forth. I believe we'll be okay with just one because they also have to be out of the air for a while. Uh, and this farm's 11 by 17. So it doesn't take that long to traverse 187 blocks and pick up squids. I don't see us picking up five stacks of squids every 187 blocks. If the spawn rates by some reason were that crazy, then we'd redesign a collection system. So I'm going to clear, I'm actually going to go down to 29 just to play it safe. Uh, underneath these posts, all the way down in Y equals 20 M, we'll get them cleared out and then we'll be right back. All right, guys. So as you can see, we've managed to clear from way up top down to our pit down here at Y equals 28. One of the things we've got to start preparing is the rail system is going to pick up all the drops. We've got the basics started here in a corner, and we're going to run powered rails all the way through. The nice thing about this build, the way we laid it out, is that it's 17 blocks long, which means that we only need to place one block of redstone in the middle as a power source for the rails. So as each rail is placed, signals from the rail on top of the redstone will carry out an additional eight blocks. So it'll take us right up to this line here. This wall will be the stopping point for the power. And then we're going to have two traditional rails going underneath the wall to turn around. It's because when the rail hits this spot that I'm standing on, if I were to do the turnaround right here, a lot of the times the drops won't get picked up. So by going underneath the ledge, we'll put the two blocks uh, with rails on top right there in order to get the minecart past the pickup spot because there's going to be half slabs placed all over this. So back in the corner is where we have our collection system. As the minecart hits that hopper, items will start to 
go into it and turn off the signal that we've got hidden behind the wall. That will depower the rail and allow the items to come out of the hopper. When the hopper is empty and there's no more items, the signal will reverse, refire up the minecart, and go back to collecting drops. And so we're just going to continue this pattern all the way through. Um, just to, oh, you always got to remember sometimes that uh, the rails have to be laid a certain way at a certain time, otherwise you miss a little bit. There we go. All right, so we'll finish this off to help us get all set up so that we can launch the mine cart and get the collection systems going here. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping I brought enough rails with me. I'm not 100% sure. I think I'm short by a few. Uh, when I, whoops, when I did the math, I thought uh, I had enough. But then uh, going through, it looks like I'm just a tad bit short. But anyways. We'll continue to get this floor pattern down, you know, and just kind of one of the things that in watching, I, I watch a lot of the guys on, on Hermitcraft. I probably am sub to 15 or 16 of the different hermits. Uh, and I spent a lot of time watching them just to, you know, get new ideas, learn new techniques and such. And, and I think they're a great resource to learn from. I don't encourage you to copy what they do, but I highly encourage you to learn from them and, and take the tips and tricks and be able to apply it to your own builds. And one of the things I always used to look at and go, well, how do they miss stuff, right? You know when you're going to go to build, you take your time. Now, keep in mind, I'm also a very analytical personality, so this is what I tend to do. I look at all the things and say, okay, here's exactly what I need. Here's all the things that I've got to do. Why do they run out of materials? And boom, I go and do it myself. All right, guys, so we finished laying down the remaining uh, rails that we needed to go craft. I just love when I miscount. It's so awesome. So what we needed to do here was actually put in place a hopper mine cart. I do apologize. This tiny little section down here after the fact, uh, I was putting that video together and realized, um, wait a minute, you just sent a blank mine cart to be a collector. You didn't put the hopper in there. So uh, yeah, you know, that would have been great. Uh, so Boomer's big blooper uh, reel continues to grow. All right, so I wanted to show you, we've got the initial uh, first section of this farm laid out here and how this is going to work. So you can see we've got two high fence gates to block the water in, and there's a row of fence gates too wide going underneath. And the hope is that this will simply only allow squid to spawn. It is a little bit more labor intensive than just building a box. But like I said before, let's try something different just to see how it works. All right, so we've got the farm in place we did three layers i was going to go fourth uh, but before i can do that i have to do a lot of terraforming and landscaping changes around here to make it fit so for the moment we're going to run with three and i'll come down here just to show you what this looks like again just two wide chambers using the fence gates to split them if by some chance a squid spawns in here he might swim around for a while he might even jump from one to another but eventually he's going to find his way into here come down and do what I just did. Apparently I must not add a whole lot of hearts. So underneath here is where that hopper minecart's running again. Um, hey, Mr. Squid, thanks for joining us today. You as well. Um, I'll take you down underneath the collection area real quick just to give you an idea. Uh, when this is running, I tested it with about four or five people. Uh, that were in the overworld at the time. And I've been collecting anywhere from probably 12 to 32 uh, ink sacks every time the mine cart cycles around. There's roughly 200 tracks that the mine cart covers in its path, maybe just a little bit more. So it's every, you know, 45 seconds to a minute. Uh, so let's see what comes in. We were at nine when it started. And again, we just got down here, so I'm not expecting a whole lot. But if I come back in here to where I'm essentially 24 blocks away from the farm, and as it cycles through, I think the average has been around 16. Um, considering, you know, it's not too bad. Only three layers in a farm. Again, it's minimal spawn spaces. It's trying to keep the other uh, water mobs from spawning within this farm. If I'd have just done a big tank, I'd probably see a little bit more squid because there'd be more valid spawn points. 
So again, you know, I, I know that the tank is probably the easiest, it definitely is easier to build than this was. But I wanted to try something different and new. And again, I'll put a link to the uh, tutorial for that person's channel uh, in the description. So what do we get here? 16 to... So we got 17 on that run from the mine cart. Again, it's not too bad. And I'm going to be in this area mining a lot of sand anyway. So this will continue to run as long as I stay 24 blocks away from the water. So, uh, And we simply just have that going up. Uh, this I should probably take out because I don't need it. But this is just the basic mine cart hits here. Underneath this block is a comparator to detect anything in that hopper. As soon as it hits it, it comes over here, hits this uh, block, turns the torch off, removes that signal, causes the minecart to stay until it drops. Uh, I forget who the creator of this was, if this was Etho or Impulse or someone else. Uh, but it's a it's a long-known redstone circuit. It's been in the game for some time. So oh, we're getting another drop. Let's see, what do we get? We're a little bit close to the farm, so I'm not expecting as much. So we got about 15, not too bad. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So down here, if I hang back here for a while, I'm essentially 24 blocks, uh, taxi cab distance, essentially a straight distance away from that spot. But uh, we're going to wrap it up right here, guys. Um, ooh, man, I need a shave. Anyways, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And don't forget to go Boomer or go home. We'll see you later.